welcome friends. So, in our last two sessions, we discussed about uh, various concepts related to facility layouts and in those uh, we discussed about uh, process, product uh, and their combinations in the form of uh, cellular layout, where in detail we discussed the concepts of uh, how to develop the cells and uh, how cellular layouts offer you advantage of both product and process layouts. And finally, we also discussed uh, the layout for service organizations, uh, where we discussed that uh, how the degree of customization and degree of customer contact uh, are two very important aspects uh, in designing your service layouts. So, based on uh, whether uh, you have high degree of contact uh, or high degree of customization or low degree of contact uh, or low degree of customization, you have uh, different types of combinations uh, for layout designing. And uh, uh, finally, we also discussed uh, that uh, the role of uh, uh, different types of symbols, uh, signs, artifacts, uh, etc. are also important in the designing of your retail outlets. Now, in our uh, one of the discussion in the layouts, uh, we discussed about uh, product layouts and uh, one very common example of product layout is assembly line, when uh, various operations are being performed in a regular sequence and uh, particularly like uh, if I am talking of uh, assembly of uh, engines. So, that is a very common example that uh, different parts move on a conveyor belt and uh, this conveyor belt moves uh, from various work centers uh, and uh, there are particular tasks to be performed at a particular work station and uh, that is to be done within a particular time limit because the belt is continuously moving and therefore, it is a very well thought, very scientifically developed movement of that belt. So, that uh, each worker, those who are performing in that uh, movement of the conveyor belt, uh, they should be able to complete their task uh, as long as that product is within their range. If you go to places like uh, London or Singapore, these places have uh, very interesting uh, giant wheels and these are known uh, Singapore I and London I. Now, when they are uh, putting passengers into that uh, trolley or that uh, uh, chamber. So, it is a very systematic that uh, when that wheel is coming down and they have to open the gate of the trolley. So, that is a particular station immediately passengers will come out. Uh, then at the second station, there are some cleaning activities and the security check and at the third, new passengers will get into the and all these activities because the wheel is continuously moving. So, all these operations you have to perform during the movement of the wheel itself. So, at each of these three stations, wheel will be there only for uh, let us say fraction of uh, minutes and uh, they have to perform their jobs uh, within those fraction of minutes. So, that is a very good example of the system in which uh, our product layouts are working. So, to perform or to develop a good product layout, uh, we need to understand how scientifically we need to design all these activities, so that uh, there is a situation of uh, complete balancing of that product layout and that is also known as a line balancing and that is the topic of our discussion that uh, what is this line balancing and uh, therefore, I can also write this uh, title as line balancing. Now, in this line balancing there are uh, some important uh, you can say theoretical aspects. Uh, that uh, what is the objective, what is the process, what are the formula we have to use and then we will see with the help of some numerical example that uh, how line balancing is done. Because this is one very important aspect uh, of operations manager to develop a good line, good line means a good product layout. So, when I am saying the line it automatically means product layout. Now, 
the goal of a product layout is to arrange workers or machines in the sequence that operations need to be performed. So, that we already know the sequence is referred to as a product line or assembly line. These assembly lines range from fairly short with just a few operations to long lines like a few operations I mentioned about uh, this uh, uh, Singapore London I where only three operations are there, but uh, it is an example of uh, assembly line or you have very long lines uh, of assembling the engine of uh, some uh, uh, car and that may take uh, up to hundreds of operations to a long line that have a large number of operations. So, automobile assembly lines are example of long lines where more than 100 operations are being performed. Now, it is an example of Ford company because whenever we are talking of assembly line, we must take the name of Ford car company because Ford was the first company to introduce the concept of assembly lines and assembly line that is also very important that this assembly line system is basically the starting point of mass manufacturing. Before that the concept of mass manufacturing was totally absent. Ford started the concept of assembly line and as a result of assembly line the mass manufacturing started as a result of that concept of economies of scale came into picture and as a result of that cost of manufacturing started decreasing. So, it became a very important kind of revolution in the development of uh, entire manufacturing philosophy. So, what is mentioned that uh, with respect to this Ford Mustangs, uh, it travels around 9 miles from start to finish. So, that itself gives you an idea that uh, it is a fairly long movement uh, because you have to perform more than 100 operations uh, during the entire assembly of this uh, uh, Mustangs and uh, therefore, it is traveling around 9 miles. Now, process of deciding how to assign tasks to workstation is referred as uh, line balancing and that is what we are going to do today. This line balancing is the important thing because uh, what type of operations need to be performed, which operation will be first, which operation is second, which is the third that is the duty of uh, design engineers, that is the duty of uh, industrial engineers. But uh, as a operation manager, the putting those various operations together on a particular work center, so that uh, you have a balanced assembly line that is your job that comes under line balancing. The goal of line balancing is to obtain task groupings that represent approximately equal time requirements. This minimizes the idle time along the line and results in high utilization of labor and equipment. So, as we have these different types of uh, tasks uh, which are grouped. So, this is uh, workstation 1, this is workstation 2, this is workstation 3, workstation 4. So, what we are actually trying that uh, the output of uh, these workstations are coming at the similar rate. So, if output is coming at the rate of uh, 2 products per minute. So, we want that almost 2 products per minute should be the rate of output from all the workstations. And if it is so, we say that it is a balanced line, but if one machine is giving at the rate of 2, another at the rate of 3, another at the rate of 1, another at the rate of 4. Now, what will happen in front of some workstations, you will have a queue like in the case of third workstation in the revised estimates, you will have queue in front of that workstation. While the workstation 4 will always be having some kind of idleness. There will be a situation of starvation in front of workstation 4 because it will not be properly fed as workstation 3 is giving one product in one minute and workstation 4 is producing four products in one minute. 
so for around 75 percent of the time work station 4 will remain idle there is no job to uh, work on so we want uh, that uh, such type of situation should not happen and this situation that two work pieces per minute kind of thing should be applicable so idle time occurs if task times are not equal among work stations some stations are capable of producing at higher rates than others these fast stations will experience periodic waits like this in this case fourth station will have periodic wait or you can have the situation of starvation the unbalanced lines are undesirable in terms of inefficient utilization of labor and equipment and because they may create moral problems at the slower work stations for workers who must work continuously so there will be few workers like a worker at work station 3 who is continuously working and worker at his work station 4 he is working only one fourth of his actual time of work so there will be a problem of morale because worker at work station 3 will say that i am working for continuously 8 hours then only i am able to fulfill the requirement worker at work station 4 is only working 25 percent of the entire working time so now the rate of output because of the unbalanced line this kind of problems will create uh, some kind of motivational issues uh, there may be some kind of resentment among the workers that uh, they are not equally treated so lines that are perfectly balanced will have a smooth flow of work as activities along the lines are synchronized to achieve maximum utilization of labor and equipment so you have a good amount of utilization the highest utilization is only possible when the line is properly balanced as line is not balanced the utilization percentage more balanced line more utilization less balanced uh, balance line less utilization of your resources so it is very important criteria that uh, how to have more productivity of your layout so you have to have a more balanced line now with this simple example you can understand the meaning of balancing now we have three operations scrubbing rinsing and drying now scrubbing takes two minutes the rinsing takes four minutes and drying takes two minutes so these three operations are taking different amount of time now here you see the primary determinant is what is the lines cycle time the first important thing is the cycle time determination now what is this cycle time please remember this term because in operation management we have some kind of terms which will be used sometime in this context sometime in some other context also so you should know that what is the meaning of cycle time now the cycle time is the maximum time allowed at each work station to perform assigned tasks before the work moves on so how much is the maximum time allowed at each work station to perform assigned task before the work moves on the cycle time also establishes the output rate of a line that how much output you can expect from this line in a particular hour or in a particular uh, uh, shift that is also being determined by the cycle time and uh, suppose just to give you more uh, meaning of this cycle time suppose that the work required to fabricate a certain product can be divided up into five elemental tasks these are the five elemental tasks and uh, different tasks are taking different amount of time with the task time and precedence relationship as shown in the following diagram so these are the precedence relationship that uh, this is task a b c d e that e can only happen when d has happened d can only happen when c has happened c can only happen when b has happened and b can only happen when a has happened so this type of relationship that uh, what is the sequence of operations that is known as precedence relationship then how much time each operation is taking 
how much time each operation is taking that is known as task time. So, like operation A is taking 0.1 minute, operation B is taking 0.7. In the earlier case, uh, scrubbing taking 2 minutes. So, that is the task time for the scrubbing. Rinsing was taking 4 minutes, that was the task time for rinsing, and so on. So, now the task time govern the range of possible cycle times. The task times are giving you a possibility of the cycle time. Now, if you develop your system, if you develop your system you in such a manner, if you develop your system in such a manner that uh, continuously products are flowing from this uh, system of uh, A, B, C, D, E. In that case, uh, you can easily understand without reading the bottom line, you can easily understand that uh, the timings are in such a manner that uh, the minimum possible cycle time is 1 minute because uh, first operation is taking 0.1 minute and uh, out of these 5 operations, the maximum time is taken by operation C that is 1 minute. So, only after 1 minute or uh, only after 1 minute uh, you will get a product because 1 minute is the maximum time taken by any particular operation. So, the cycle time becomes 1 minute that is the minimum possible. Now, if you do not have this kind of continuous system, you say ok, I will insert one input from A side and when this input goes to the finished state, then only I will put another input so that that can be processed. So, in that case, the maximum cycle time will be the sum of all these uh, task times. So, that will be 0.1 plus 0.7 plus 1 plus 0.5 plus 0.2 that is 2.5 minutes. So, these are the ranges of cycle time that uh, either you can have the cycle time which is the maximum task time of any particular task or you can have the second situation where the cycle time is the sum of all the task time where you are not putting products regularly into your system whenever you want you are putting one product and you are getting the output. So, when you do not have the regular production requirement in that case the cycle time can be as high as 2.5 minutes, but when you are having a regular system of production continuously inputs are coming and uh, there is a regular uh, production activity then in that case. Uh, the cycle time will be 1 minute. So, you can have different combinations of cycle time. Then another important term which is to be understood that is the output rate. Now, the minimum cycle time would apply if there are 5 workstations, the maximum cycle time would apply if all tasks were performed at a single workstation. The minimum and maximum cycle times are important because they establish the potential range of output for the line which we can compute using the following formula. So, operating time per day that uh, uh, how many hours, uh, how many minutes uh, you are having in a particular shift divided by the cycle time. So, like uh, if you are having 8 hours shift per day you have 8 hours shift, 8 hours of working time. So, 8 into 60 480 minutes are the total time available for the operation. So, 480 minutes and uh, if I consider the minimum cycle time that is 1 minute per day. So, that makes uh, 480 units per day. Now, I want to produce somebody says that uh, can you produce 600 units per day. So, in that case uh, I have to revise my cycle time. I can produce with this particular arrangement uh, right now my output is 480 units per day. But uh, if somebody says that you have to produce 600 units, uh, the market requirement is 600 units per day. So, 480 divided by 600 and in that case uh, you can easily understand that my cycle time will be less than 1 minute. So, I have to develop a new line, a new assembly line where the cycle time is now less than 1 minute. So, cycle time affects the output rate 
and output rate can also affect my cycle time. So, we will see with the help of numerical example that how these things happen, but uh, uh, there is a close relationship between output rate and the cycle time. Now, or you can increase the, uh, the other way is if uh, you want to have 600 as output and you are not in a condition to reduce the cycle time. In that way, in that condition, you should increase your operating time per day from 480 minutes to 600 minutes, so that uh, you have enough time for producing these 600 units. So, in that case, we go with uh, over time that we have discussed in case of uh, our MRP calculations uh, that uh, will force us to go for the over time. Now, as a general rule, the cycle time is determined by the desired output as I just mentioned that is a desired output rate is selected and the cycle time is computed. If the cycle time does not fall between the maximum and minimum bounds, the desired output rate must be revised. We can compute the cycle time using this following equation. So, that we have already done. Now, we can determine the theoretical minimum number of work station to provide a specified rate of output as follows. Now, we are getting a cycle rate which is a dot within this uh, maximum and minimum bounds. Like I am giving this example that uh, I want uh, 600 outputs uh, in 8 hours. So, now this is less than the uh, cycle time which is possible that was of 1 minute. So, now I have to rearrange, I have to rearrange my assembly line and uh, therefore, I need to calculate that how many number of work stations are possible or how many number of work stations should be there so that I can achieve this uh, uh, cycle time. For that purpose, I have to do sigma t that is the sum of all the task time that is 2.5 in this particular case divided by cycle time, the cycle time which came because of particular output requirement. So, this will give me the theoretical number of uh, work stations in my assembly line, but theoretical number of work stations and the actual number of work stations may not be the same that depends upon the line balancing. If uh, theoretical and uh, actual numbers are same then the line is 100 percent balance, but it will not happen that way there will certainly be more number of uh, work stations you cannot have work stations. Uh, in decimals in fractions and therefore, uh, you can only have work stations either 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 that means integers and uh, therefore, efficiency will not be 100 percent all the time. Now, in this particular case uh, with this uh, example, we will see how to develop the precedence diagram. Now, for developing a precedence diagram, you see that uh, we can see from the diagram that the only requirement to begin task B is task A and for task D the requirement is that task B and task C both must be completed then only task D can start, but task C can start independently because there is no task before task C. So, for B A is a precedence, for C there is no precedence for D, B and C both are precedence unless until B and C both are finished you cannot start D and then for E, D is the precedence and for each task you have the task times, these are the task times for different tasks. So, this is a simple example that is giving you the idea of precedence diagram. Now, based on this precedence diagram we can calculate uh, the number of work centers uh, or uh, we can balance our line. Now, here these are the uh, values and uh, we have uh, these calculations available here, but uh, we will show we will do a more robust calculation which will give you a better idea of uh, how to do and uh, we will select some level of uh, output also in that particular case. Now, for that purpose uh, we have this example with us. Here the manufacturing engineers 
एट ए पर्टिकुलर कंपनी आर वर्किंग ऑन ए न्यू रिमोट कंट्रोल टॉय ट्रक दे हायर्ड ए प्रोडक्शन कंसल्टेंट टू हेल्प देम डिटरमाइन द बेस्ट टाइप ऑफ प्रोडक्शन प्रोसेस टू मीट दी फोरकास्टेड डिमांड फॉर दिस न्यू प्रोडक्ट द कंसल्टेंट रिकमेंडेड दैट दे यूज एन असेंबली लाइन सो नाउ इट इज ए क्वेश्चन ऑफ डेवलपमेंट ऑफ असेंबली लाइन ही टोल द मैन्युफैक्चरिंग इंजीनियर्स दैट द लाइन मस्ट बी एबल टू प्रोड्यूस 600 ट्रक्स पर डे टू मीट दी लाइन सो द आउटपुट इज 600 यूनिट्स द वर्कर्स इन द प्लांट वर्क एट आवर्स पर डे द टास्क इंफॉर्मेशन फॉर द न्यू ट्रक इज गिवेन इन दिस स्लाइड एंड हेयर यू सी दैट दीज आर दी डिफरेंट टास्क फ्रॉम ए टू के एंड फॉर ईच टास्क वी हैव द टास्क टाइम एंड देन यू हैव द कंडीशन यू हैव द रिस्ट्रिक्शन अबाउट द प्रेसिडेंस सो द फर्स्ट इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग वी नीड टू डू दैट इज टू प्रिपेयर ए प्रेसिडेंस डायग्राम टू प्रिपेयर ए प्रेसिडेंस डायग्राम सो यू जस्ट रिमेंबर दिस थिंग दैट फॉर ए एंड बी there is no precedence there is no precedence a and b can start independently so here you see that a and b these two tasks are starting independently there is no precedence for them then you see for c it is b and for d it is a so for c it is b and for d it is a then for e it is c and for f e and d you see for f d and e both are the precedents similarly if you see for j g and h for j g and h both are required and uh, then only you can start this uh, particular activity so for uh, this particular case uh, j g and h so g is also to come here and then only this is possible and uh, similarly you see for k i and j both are required so k can only be completed when i and j both are completed so in this way this precedence diagram is prepared now the second thing is to calculate the cycle time now the sigma t sigma of task time equals to 236 seconds so our output rate is mentioned as 600 trucks per day for 8 hours day 8 hours means uh, you have uh, 480 minutes and 480 into 60 seconds uh, so 28800 seconds uh, you have in all in a particular day and the desired output rate is 600 trucks uh, so 48 second is the cycle time 48 second is the calculated cycle time now if you see the minimum cycle time for uh, any of these uh, thing is possible that is going to be the maximum of uh, these values so maximum of these values is uh, 37 maximum of these values is 37 so one type of cycle time possible and the sum of task time is uh, 236 that is also cycle time possible now 37 is the cycle time possible when all these tasks are independent and 236 is the cycle time possible when you are putting all these tasks into a single work station but we require a cycle time of 48 second it means uh, it is between of 37 and 236 and therefore you have to find some kind of suitable combinations of these thing and for that purpose uh, our next calculation is to calculate the theoretical number of work stations so the theoretical number of work stations will be 236 that is the sigma of task time divided by cycle time so it is 4.92 so 4.92 is the 
actual number of work stations uh, that means theoretical number of work stations. But now you can easily understand that 4.92 work stations are not possible. So, the nearest work station if I am going with this calculation the nearest number of work stations which are possible is 5. As soon as I go for 5 work stations my efficiency will go down from 100 percent. 100 percent efficiency is only possible when I have 4.92 work stations, but that is practically not possible. So, automatically even if uh, I am following what is the best possible scenario, but uh, even in that case uh, the efficiency will be less than 100 percent. So, that is uh, a natural problem I cannot uh, do anything for avoiding this natural, but yes if the number of work stations are coming to 6 or 7 when we will do the calculations that is something which we need to see can we reduce it to 5. So, that I can have the maximum possible efficiency in this particular case. Now, for that purpose let us go back to the uh, problem statement. Now, this problem statement says now we are coming to part D of this problem use the longest task time rule with alphabetical orders as the tie breaker and balance the line in the minimum number of work stations to produce 600 trucks per day. We have to develop a line that means uh, the uh, idea is that uh, I have to develop some number of work stations work station 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and these work stations will be developed in such a manner that may be at work station 1 I have task A, D and B. Here I have C, E, here I have F, G, H, here I may have I, J, here I may have K. So, this grouping of tasks on various work station is the part of uh, development of the line. I am not sure whether it is correct or not, but uh, this type of shape will finally come when we will do. Now, there are different types of rules through which you can assign these different tasks to a work station. There are different types of rules and the rule suggested to us in this particular case is to use the longest time task time rule. So, you can create multiple type of rules and uh, like in the next part E, it is the shortest task time. So, either we can use the longest task time, shortest task time, then how many tasks are behind you. So, there are different types of rules which are possible. Now, when we are using the longest task time rule, so let us see. Now, we are developing the station 1, we are developing the station 1 and at station 1, you see the task which are there a, b, the a, b these are the initial task. Since it was mentioned in the problem that you select the task in the alphabetical order, I have selected task a, out of a, b I selected a. Then the task time is 28 seconds, I can use maximum 48 seconds so that is the cycle time for a particular work station. So, I still have 20 seconds available with me. So, I can assign one more task to this one or two more tasks I do not know how many will come in this 20 seconds, but I can assign. Now, I will go to next assignment category and I have taken B and D. B is here and D is here because B is followed by C and A is followed by D. So, in that way I am moving ahead that uh, the longest task times are there. So, 13 and 11 because uh, after this uh, the task times are less. So, B and D are the feasible task. Now, out of these two in the alphabetical orders B is coming before D, it is taking 13 seconds. So, 7 seconds are still idle. Now, you can take you can take C or D task, you can take C or D task for the third category, 
now the c and d task both are taking more than 7 minutes so you cannot have any further task to be added here so finally the 7 seconds remain wasted you will not be able to use the 7 seconds of your task 1 as work center 1 and only these 41 seconds you are able to use similarly you see for the work station 2 you are able to use 46 seconds and 2 seconds are wasted for the third we are able to use only 26 seconds 22 seconds are wasted a very high level of wastage for the third work station for the fourth work station you are able to use complete 48 second and there is no wastage again for the fifth 48 no wastage and for the last work station you are using 27 and 21 seconds are the wastage so in this case now you see that finally we have six work stations and these six work stations are arranged in a manner that station 1 where tasks a and b will be performed then station 2 where task c and d will be performed then station 3 where task e and f will be performed then station 4 where task h and g will be performed then station 5 where task i and j will be performed and finally station 6 where only one task k will be performed so you have the six stations and then you can calculate the efficiency also the theoretical number of work stations were 4.92 and the actual number of work stations are 6 so that is uh, giving you the efficiency of your uh, total system uh, of this line balancing so you can see that uh, it is uh, certainly less than 100 percent with your best efforts of balancing the line similarly with the uh, another type of uh, idea that uh, how many number of tasks are following a particular task you can develop uh, the same kind of uh, arrangement and even in this kind of arrangement uh, we saw that uh, six work stations are needed so again the same efficiency up to uh, part c the problem is same d and e are two parts uh, to demonstrate you that how different decision rules can be used for development of the uh, uh, balanced lines now with this uh, we come to end of this session where we discuss that uh, how line balancing is done and during this line balancing issue we discussed uh, two three very important terms uh, one is the uh, cycle rate then the second is the efficiency of your line balancing and third is uh, the work center so these are the three very important terms uh, which you remember all through your uh, life uh, because in practice in uh, professional life uh, these terms are used to uh, discuss our technical contents uh, of uh, the production floors and therefore uh, if you are not aware of these terms uh, you will not be able to understand the meaning of uh, what is being discussed so with this we come to end of this session thank you very much